Hey, you are listening to the Grumpy Guy BJJ Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? Got to take care of a few things before we jump into this week's episode. First, our Ramping Isometrics for BJJ program. It is a 12-week program all laid out for you. It's going to help you build strength and cardio in the fastest, safest, and most convenient way possible. This is how James and I have been training for the past year, and we love it. So we put this program together so you can just follow along, and we are certain you will see and feel the benefits that we do. It's only 15 bucks. Just go to grumpyguybjj.com, click the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner, and you'll find it. Next, R3. Is, this is our K2-D3 supplement. It is a combination, combination of those two vitamins, D3 and K2. These are two vitamins that James and I have been taking for a long time that really help us recover from hard training sessions. And for only 15 bucks with free shipping, you get a whole month's supply. I was going to pull up some studies explaining the benefits of D3 and K2, but I'm not going to insult your intelligence and pretend to be a fucking scientist. I take it. It helps me recover. That's it. So for 15 bucks, check it out. And last, but certainly not least, we have partnered up with Dejitsu.com. They have a ton of awesome BJJ instructionals, and they have hooked us up with a discount code for our listeners. It's Grumpy10. So what you got to do is you go to Dejitsu.com, which is D-I-G-I-T-S-U.com. Find the instructionals you want, throw them in a shopping cart, in the little discount code box, you type in Grumpy10, which is just G-R-U-M-P-Y, and the number 10. One zero. That's it. No spaces. Boom. You get 10% off. You're up and running. They got a nice app you can download on your phone. That way you can take your instructions right to the gym with you. Watch the technique. Drill it. It's a pretty sweet setup. So once again, D-I-G-I-T-S-U dot com. Discount code Grumpy10, G-R-U-M-P-Y-1-0. Simple as that. To find all this stuff I just got done talking about, go to our website, GrumpyGuyBJJ.com. Click the drop-down menu in the upper right-hand corner. There, you'll subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates. You'll find links for the Ramping ISOs program, the R3 Recovery Supplement, and then under the Programs and Products tab, you'll find a link to Dejitsu.com. And let's be honest, if you guys can't figure out how to navigate a website by now, there's nothing I can do to help you. So quit fucking around, check it out, train hard, and let's get into this week's episode. And... Here we go. Go. All right. Here we are again. Once again, early morning podcast. Yeah, pre-Saturday training. Yep. Seems to be the call if we're not, can't do it on Friday. Yep. Hey, you're working this Friday. Yeah, I worked this Friday. Just, we were, no, it's, I mean, we're sort of busy, but we had a couple guys on vacation. We had somebody uh, leave for uh, some sort of funeral leave. So, mm. you know, somebody passed away in the family. And so they asked me, like, early this week, like, I'm on here Tuesday, hey, if I'd be willing to work my day off. Mm. And generally, like, my Fridays, it's kind of a volunteer thing since I have Fridays off. And I usually don't know until, like, Friday morning. Like, they'll, I'll call in or my boss will call me, like, hey, you want to work or, you know, something something yeah. to that effect. But, yeah, they asked me early on, like, hey, this week's getting away from us. Uh, would you mind working Friday? <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I'll come in and cruise around town. All right, all right. I'm not going to fucking tell you ride in the middle of a snowstorm, but. Yeah, I know how's uh, they've been getting hammered. Dude. Have they? Yeah, next week's gonna suck. <laughs> it's gonna suck, man. Good thing it's a short week. It's, yeah, I guess all that, that rain that passes through here gets uh, they've been getting hammered, dude. Cool, yeah. Well, good. I'm glad to hear the mountains are getting some snow because I'll keep motherfuckers up there. Are they skiing yet? Is that uh, some that? resorts? Some resorts are open, okay? Yeah, not, not all of them. You know, like Powderhorn, our local resort, doesn't open until the 13th of December. Yeah, that's just BLM rules, though. Yeah, um, but I know like A Basin's open, I think Keystone and Breck and all those guys are open. I mean, Sweet, no, nah, obviously not 100% yet, right? Yeah, well, it just keeps them from riding here as much. It's funny, last weekend I got out to ride and I was it was markedly fewer people was it on the trail yeah it's just been like bananas well we it's been really nice it's been nice here we've had that cold we had that cold snap and then it's been back to the 50s and 60s and shit like it's been been super super nice nice days for getting out but like you know you can't like up in the high country though there's not enough snow to ski the trip but it's it's too much it ruins the trails for riding and so and then yeah dude just people like fruit has done a fucking great job of turning this place into a mountain biking destination i mean just i forget at one point we were like there's just license plates from all over 
and you know it's like yeah which is good it is but i don't also, know it's <clears throat> dude i I know I, I, I struggle I, with it, man. I, know, I don't I like it at all. I, I struggle with it too. You know, I, I see myself being a little bit of a grumpy old man. You know, I just because you just notice the population here is growing, mm-hmm. dude. You just you drive around town. You can on, run into traffic now on a Friday afternoon. You know, it gets busy. Yeah, you'll see traffic backed up in places you used to never see. Yeah, You're backed up for light stoplight yeah. after stoplight. Like this is like big city traffic. Yeah, like and. It's like, oh man! I know. It, I, I know. This part, a little part, a little piece of me dies. Like uh. the thing is, you have to accept it. So the part of me, like that's the only part of me that's fine with it. Is the yes. part of me that's like, I have to accept this because there's no, it's inevitable. There's no stopping it. Yeah. But yeah, the reason I moved here, fucking 13, 14 years ago, is because there weren't a lot of people here, and it, I could. It's a good mix. Yeah, yeah, I could go out to the trails yeah. on a fucking Saturday afternoon in, in the fall, and there was like, you know, maybe twenty cars in the parking lot. But it's like, now you go and it's just a fucking hundred, mm-hmm. and they're just parked. It's just it's wild. It's crazy, and it just it changes the experience. And but the problem is, is you know, if you're coming here, it's all it's all perspective, right? Like if you're coming here from the front range or you're coming here from Southern California where it's just, it really is wall-to-wall people. I mean, it's fucking crazy, you know, trying to deal with all the other trail users. And so you come here and comparatively speaking, there's nobody. And, but you know, we are used to something different. And so like, that's the, that's the problem is like, everyone's like, dude, this place is great. Cause it's better than where I come from, which is even more crowded than this. So, but, uh, yeah, you just deal with it. I don't go ride on like the weekends at certain trails. Yeah. You can't, you, you just have to avoid places on the weekends, certain places. Yeah. You got to start finding your own little private spots. Dude, what was it when we were trying to drive out to go hike? Yeah, we were a couple weekends back. Yeah, man. I had all the way out to Pollock bench and it was just everywhere. And again, I, like three, four years ago, I you'd go out there same day, and I mean there wouldn't be a quarter of the people, and it's like what? Yeah, over the last like three, four years around here, it is like like doubled or tripled the amount of people that you'll see uh, on the trails and and shit like that on a nice weekend, and so yeah, it's I don't a- like it, man. It's like fucking. Go away. Dude, it's a little scary. Did, um, did you listen to Chris Cresser on JRE this week? You know who Chris Cresser is, oh, right? I know you, uh, I know the name. Who is he? He's a nutrition guy. Okay, yeah. yeah scientist yeah. nutrition yeah. guy. Yep, yep, yep. Well, yep, yep. the basis of their conversation was, and here's why I bring it up. The basis was to debunk that Game Changers movie, that uh, vegetarian propaganda movie right, that just right, came right. out. That, dude, him and Rob, I've seen Rob Wolf, dude. He fucking hates that thing. Yeah, dude. <laughs> well, most scientists... Yeah. Or just destroying this movie. Because it is really a vegan propaganda movie. Yeah. Like James Cameron put this out and oh just coincidentally he's investing in a huge like pea protein supplement company or some shit. But anyways. Right. But a a big part of his conversation was <laughs> the sustainability of being able to feed all us humans. Because our population just keeps growing and growing. And whether it's a meat based diet or vegetarian based it doesn't matter. Right. Trying to feed like all of us people, it's becoming a problem and it's going to become a big problem sooner than we'd like to think. Like dude, it kinda of put me in like this doom and gloom mindset. Like, <laughs> but I think he threw out the statistic that uh if we keep on the same trend uh, in agriculture that we're on right now, that we only have approximately sixty harvests left in this current soil. Before it's just unusable, because you, you, when you just farm the same plot of land over yeah, and, and over and do. over again, and then they just start putting fertilizers in it, which kills everything else, and it's not really the same thing. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And so he said, approximately, according to you know whatever scientist he was you know referring to, that we only have about sixty harvests left. <clears throat> just that's sixty years. Yeah. So we better come up with. Uh, the petri dish meat pretty soon or something's gonna i don't know what's gonna happen it's i don't care it's scary that's dude. funny dude yeah. i i hear you but by the same token like it freaks me out a little bit i don't that shit never happens you know i mean how many fucking, but it's only gotta happen once <laughs> i know but what like you mean never happens well i just mean like you always hear these 
these things. Like this isn't the first time someone has said like on our current trend, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to sustain this for whatever. I mean, this right. has been going on and that's, that's what humans do. Like, it's like, well, of course, you know, we're, we'll probably, we'll course correct. And, you know, I, you know, it's funny, man. I was talking to Shiloh about this the other night. Like, like what, what is so wrong with thinking that humans are the fucking like smartest beings in the universe? I mean, we're not so bad, man. You know, we figured some shit out. I like to think we're pretty smart. We're pretty good. Do you know what I mean though? But like, cause we like to watch the, like the ancient alien shit on history. It's fucking entertaining. And, uh, you know, but the premise behind that is that, dude, we're like barely a half a step above a monkey. Like we're so goddamn retarded and stupid that, you know, without alien help and all of this shit that like we're, you know, we're fucking idiots basically is the premise, right? Like there's got to be so many other more advanced, beautiful civilizations out there and we're just like, like, you know, God, like we're lucky that they let us hang around. Is, is the, you know, and... Well, they sell it to you that way to, I know. Keep, you, to keep you interested. I know, but, that, the, but you do have, like, people on some level. I mean, even, like, people who are into, like, the artificial intelligence thing, right? Like, at the core of it is that humans suck. Like, we're fucking terrible. We're, we're terrible. And, it, we're, you know, we're, we have to be able to develop something better than us because we're fucking horrible. Right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of at the core. Like, you hear, like, oh, humans suck this, that, and the other. And it's like... Okay, but at the same time, like, we did invent the fucking iPhone. We have averted, uh, you know, we, we have survived and, and adapted and averted disasters and survived disasters. And, and, you know, so it's like when you look at the, the, the trends, like, what was it, like, David Pinker wrote that book where he was, um, what was it, Enlightenment Now? Where he's basically showing, like, dude, the trends towards pretty much fucking everything is positive over time like you know or if you look at the at the actual numbers and the statistics like things are getting better everywhere and so like i don't know like we somehow manage i guess that's where the alien people come in and i guess the aliens fucking guiding you do they be like the one episode? They're like they beam ideas. Like you know, where did <laughs> where did Nikola Tesla get the idea? And they're like aliens beamed it into his head, and that's where Albert Einstein got the fucking idea for <laughs> relativity. So even that's like, you know, they got that covered. Like where do we? How do we? Well, I think if it just falls into <laughs> us as a species. We always it's into the God thing. You know, like if you don't worship God, you're going to worship something else. Yeah. And so a lot of these alien people don't necessarily, aren't necessarily religious people. Obviously I'm speaking from generalities, but, right. and so they're not going to, they don't worship a deity. They got they're, something else. They got yeah. something else. Even the worship. artificial intelligence it, people. Right, exactly. Like the science is their the new science. God. Right. Yeah. And so I think that's where it kind of falls into it. Yeah. Yeah. We don't like to think we're the best. No. But I don't know. We're pretty fucking good. We are pretty fucking good. I guess that's my point. Like, there's a tension between, you know, we're like, thinking thinking that we are the best and the pinnacle, right? Like, at one point, like, that was the attitude that, like, hey, you know, especially, like, the white man, right? Like, I, it, I am here to help the lower races, the white man's burden. Like, it's... <laughs> But you know what I mean? Right, at one yeah. point, like you had a mindset in certain circles that was the extreme opposite of that. That like, no, man is the pinnacle of the universe. I mean, you know, we're made in God's image. The only thing higher than us is God. And it's like, and so we have the right to, um, you know, abuse the planet, you know, take over, you know, like not be nice to animals. Uh, go colonize other areas that aren't as advanced as we are because we're trying to bring them up. And so you can see where that, that mindset going to the other extreme is bad. But I just I feel like there's just this trend today towards the other extreme to where we just shit on ourselves and we're just terrible, especially if you're a white male, right? And so uh, I just, I feel like, I, I, yeah, I, you know, there's a tension between those two things, and I think it's getting too far towards the let's shit on ourselves and self-depreciation type or self-deprivating, yeah.
Yeah. Yep. Self deprecation. Yeah. Self depreciating. Yeah. Same Something. thing, right? Yeah. So that's a big word. Yeah. So I think you use it <clears throat> properly. At the end of the day, man, we came up with jujitsu. We're pretty badass. On, on, that, on that note, did you see that UPS? I think they teamed up with was it CVS or Walgreens? They did their first um, prescription drug order via drone mm. back at the beginning of this month. Mm-mm. They actually they only delivered to like a couple customers. But they got the clearance from, what is it, the FAA to fly their commercial drones just recently. And so they're starting to roll out these programs. And they actually made the first delivery via drone back at the beginning of November. That is going to be just stupid. It's kind of cool, though. I it's think cool, it's, man, but, like, where does it go? Like, do you really, you know how annoying it is to have just a fucking have drone drones flying, flying overhead? All over, yeah. It's like, it's... Yeah, because they're not silent. No, they're not. They're very noisy. They're, like, it is noise pollution. Yep. Like, I think that that's going to be one of those things, like those stupid fucking scooters that showed up in the cities everywhere. Like the bird scooters. Yeah, 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 there. right? It was one of these things like, you know, oh, the first couple ones were really cool, and then there was more, and then all of a sudden people realized, like, dude, this is a fucking problem. Like, yeah. we got to regulate this shit. So, you know, you don't think about what a blight all those scooters turn into, uh, you know, overnight, just fucking everywhere, all over your city, and so that, that's one of those things. Like, I think the noise pollution is. I just don't. I I see why you would want to do it, but that's one of those things where I'm like, dude, I just like. There's it's not a line. Scal- that, yeah. that that's over the line for me. It's like, I, I think it's not scalable. It's not start, scalable. You start trying to do all your Amazon Prime packages well, that way. The it's, thing is, is like now you are. I don't know how to put it, but it's like you're. Your need to have that right of way is now starting to infringe on other people's just existence, right? Like if I'm sitting in my yard and I and I happen and I gotta listen to a fucking drone fly over me because you know we're doing fucking drone deliveries, like well you know, that, that bugs, you know what I mean? Like that that infringes on my peace and quiet. Let me well, okay, I I don't a hundred percent disagree, but. Is it better or worse than a big diesel truck? They don't let diesel trucks fucking just romp through neighborhoods unregulated. I do it all the time. Yeah, but you see like no air brakes. You know what I mean? Like they do have, they, they do recognize that diesel trucks are... But, but even even just people, civilians with big diesel trucks. Like my yeah. asshole neighbor's got that gigantic fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it's, his truck is so loud when it's parked near my house, it rattles my walls. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather That's hear absurd. a drone. I'd rather hear a drone than that fucking asshole. It's absurd. Yeah, so... Well, I say we just... The thing is, is we draw the line and we hold it rather than saying like, well, fuck, there's other things that bug the shit out of it. Let's just so add more. Lo- <laughs> ah, there is no line. Well, see, okay, the reason I'm... Okay, the reason I bring that up is because maybe if there's more drone delivery, there'll be less delivery trucks. Yeah, but I don't mind delivery trucks. Delivery That's trucks only because are- you're, you're used to them. Yeah. You've been desensitized to them. I don't know, man. I guess so. I mean, if you're going to say that, I'm definitely more used to the noise of a truck slash car than I am the noise of a drone. Yep. And so the drone is definitely more, uh, yeah. I think I a guess more, over time, I guess I would just get used to I it. think a more sustainable, better option is going electric, electric cars. Like, cause, I mean, have you ever heard of Tesla? There's... Dude, yeah, what? You, they're so quiet. You don't fucking hear them. Yeah. And so if you have solve a, our drone problem though. Well, if you have more electric uh, delivery trucks, mm. you know, more efficient delivery vehicles, and they're all electric, you don't hear them. They're just gonna be zipping around, dropping your packages off. And if that's really efficient, then they don't have to do the stupid drone thing. Well, the drone thing is all about the. I have to have it now. You know, because you're never gonna have unless unless you have a delivery driver, which they do. You know, like that. You see, uh, like. Fucking like, you know, when I was in Seattle, I saw those Amazon Prime trucks driving all over the place. And it's like, you can literally order something and have it delivered the same day. Yeah. Big cities, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, they're trying to do that. Like, you know, well, how about areas where we can't, you know, it doesn't make sense to have a whole truck fleet. You know, it doesn't make sense to have a few drones doing it. I didn't look that up. I just kind of glanced at that article. I wonder how far those drones flew. You know, I wonder yeah. like where their drones were based yeah, to make yeah. that delivery. I, I didn't even think about looking that stat up. Huh. Damn it. I failed our listeners. I know they were. 
15 minutes, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, those batteries don't last super long. I mean, no, unless they got... They can't be going that far. Yeah. I mean, they might have industrial drones or something like that that are more heavy duty than what... Dude, they're going to be more susceptible to weather. Yeah. Wind currents. You know, we live in this valley. We get some crazy Man, wind I'll currents Man, I tell you, those things are fucking crazy. I mean, you've seen yeah. th- those fucking big ones. And, uh, I mean, I know, like, my brother-in-law or ex-brother-in-law, I think. I'm not really sure where they are with that whole divorce thing. Um, and uh, he shoots drone footage for realtors. And, man, it's like, dude, that thing is... They're fucking... They're, like... They're like planes. They've gotten to the point where they're like airplanes where you really, the human is just there to make sure nothing goes wrong. But they take off by themselves. You plug in the coordinates and tell it what you want it to do. It does that by itself. Because a lot of what they do, like for him to film video, he can't fly the thing. So what he's doing is he he programs in and then it goes and does its flight path and then he's just controlling the camera. Oh. Yeah, because you would admit it'd be so hard to do both. Right. You're trying to control the drone and the camera. And the camera and, and stuff, yeah. Because, you know, you and I have played with those little Amazon drones. Yeah. You know, that's those little $25 things. They're not the easiest things in the world to fly. No. If you were trying to fly one of those and yeah. control the camera at the same time, no, you're, yeah. you're going to get shit footage. It's tough. Yeah, you're not, you're getting, exactly. So the pro ones, like I said, the real high level ones are... They're a different level than what you get through Amazon or what, like, your local hobby store or whatever. So, but you're dropping, like, mad cash on those things. But, yeah, they're pretty, I mean, I can see it. Because, like I said, I've seen his drone. Like, you could literally program in to fucking take off, fly over there, land, take off, come back, and land. And it'll do it. Oh, let's see. I don't have any experience with, like, a high-end drone like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the technology is there. It's just for them, it's all about like getting the the clearance and the systems and and just like the, um, I guess like the safety uh, walls, you know, legal, legal. They got to cover all their legal fucking bases before they just start sending fucking drones yeah, out. His battery fails on one of those and it drops There's on a kid. Happens. And it drops on the kid's head. <laughs> Dude, totally, man. I know. How many That's times? exactly your kid could be outside playing and he gets fucking smoked by a drone he's out riding his bike. It was going to be a whole new like legal uh, thing, you know, because it's going to have to be protected by law but somebody's going to fucking like throw a rock at shoot one or shoot it down or shoot a BB gun at it. Oh, yeah. Like, there's just no way someone's oh, going to do it. I would, de- as a kid, man, like a 12-year-old boy, I'd be outside playing. That would be so, like, oh, there's a drone. Dude, get it. Start get throwing it. rocks and shit at it. BB gun, paintball gun. <laughs> It'd be so much fun, dude. You know. But it's a, it's illegal. Like, they have, I mean, I don't know if you know, but, like, there's a whole, like, legal precedent for all this shit. Like, you can't just attack a fucking drone. Can't you? No. Like, like, so if you took your... You don't own the airspace over your house. So you can't just throw a rock at a, a drone if a neighbor's nope. flying it over your yard? Uh-uh. Nope. Hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, you can, but I guess, it's, like, it's technically illegal. it's illegal. It's illegal, huh? Yeah, you'd be destroying their property. And so, again, I'm, I'm not, I'm no expert in this, but I just, I know just through, you know, various reading shit here and there that, uh, you know, yeah, they've been down this hole before, you know, I think, Some, I think the answer is a high end slingshot. Remember, remember getting those when we were kids? Yeah. The, oh, the, fuck the yeah, beefy, dude. The beefy ones with the wrist yep. and the forearm support. And you get you those flip metal, it out, metal fucking metal. balls. <laughs> Man. Ugh. That sounds like a good present for Z. You think he's ready for one of those yet? No. I think he might be. He might be, but probably not. <laughs> we'll start <laughs> with the foam balls. Well, what if a degenerate uncle happened to get him one of those? As long as there's some foam balls for him to practice with. Practice with? with? Yeah. Be... Ooh, I just I forgot all about those to just now. Dude, they're great. I they're had great. Yeah. The, the higher end ones, the nice ones. No, yeah. I, fucking, I remember I stole one when I was in high school. You can fuck some shit up with those things. Hell dude. yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Fun. Yeah, I went through a little klepto phase in high school. I like. I I figured out that I could do it, and so then because when when we were in high school, that was right when I remember. When I like going into a store and being like, oh, there's a fucking camera. Like, cause when we were kids, like having security cameras and like alarm stuff and wasn't all that the, stuff, wasn't the norm. it was not the norm, man. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, it wasn't like stealing. It was like stupid shit, like a candy bar. Like, so like there was like a fucking slingshot and I like, you know, work it over aisle to aisle to where 
the people can't see you. Like, there's a whole fucking art to it, man. I'm not proud of it, but it's like, if you don't direct your fucking genius towards something positive, it can go off the rails. And so, I was fucking directing it in a bad direction, but, uh... I got a story that I'm not too proud about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I ended up getting enough. fucking caught, man. Did like, you? Yeah, yeah, I got, uh, I was at a, um... Oh, what was it, man? Old, old like, record CD store. I can't uh-huh. remember the name because they're all fucking gone now. And, uh, yeah, I uh, got a CD. And, and, again, I'd worked it. I got it out of the box. I had a whole little system. And uh, What CD was it? Man, I can't remember. Damn it. I can't remember. I was it hoping was, it was, like, Millie Vanilli or something. No, <laughs> I, I, it was, I, I cannot remember what it was. But I walked out, and we were walking out to the car, and all of a sudden this dude was behind us, and he was like, excuse me, I don't think you paid for those CDs or something like that. And so, yeah, they didn't call the cops. They just fucking took a picture and put me up on the don't ever come back in the store fucking wall. That's funny. I got a story. A story about that too. I went through a little klepto phase and my entrepreneurial side was kicking in. There was this big grocery store and uh, this is all allegedly. And, of course. Of course. Of but course. Uh, the way their cigarettes were set up, it was really <laughs> easy to steal cartons of cigarettes. <laughs> I used to steal cartons of fucking Copenhagen and stuff yeah. to the fucking yes. kids. Yeah, that's what I would do. I would, we, you could go. We'd go in there with buddies, like two, three, four of us. We would each steal like a carton or two of cigarettes oh, and then man. sell them. Yeah. And take them, take them back to the park and sell them to all our buddies and just you know make a bunch of money. Yeah, that was the jam. We yeah, did, man. We used to do that quite a bit. Yeah, until one of us got popped. Yeah, and then we had to. Yeah, it only takes once. It only takes once. There, there was another scam allegedly that I heard a friend to do um, at the old Sears Roebuck bias. You could go in there. Again, this is all prior to cameras and shit. You go in there and they had their saw blades for like their skill saws, uh-huh. their table saws. Yeah. And you get the high end ones like with carbide and shit on them. You know, I mean, they'd be like a hundred bucks, 80 bucks. You just go in there and take it off the shelf, walk around the corner, bend up the corner of the package and then take it to the register. And like, Hey man, I got to return this for my dad. You know, it wasn't the right one. I don't have the receipt. And they were so good about it. They'd be like, oh, okay. Dude, they would just give you cash. <laughs> so I would literally just take it off the shelf, bend the corner, walk it to the register. <laughs> oh, man. And just make like 100 bucks. Huh. Yeah, it's yeah, a I mean, after school you, job. You couldn't, couldn't do it too often. <laughs> but. You couldn't do it too often. You couldn't go to that well too many times. But I did it a few times. Like on a Friday afternoon, like, man, I need some money for a beer this weekend. Oh, let's just go return a saw blade. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good because you don't like. There's nothing. You're not stealing. You're not stealing it, and you never left a store with you it. You know, you like you could be. It's confused. immoral. Yeah, it's immoral. But yeah, unless they have like a camera or someone saw yeah. you do it, it's like, what are they gonna yeah. say? So, yeah, yeah, that was the good old days when they relied on just your like integrity. <laughs> <laughs> it was an honor-based system. And which, it was flawed. <laughs> which didn't play well in the like fucking teenagers. 16-year-old no. kid that wants a case of beer. Yeah, I don't think about those things. So. No. Yeah. Yes, I don't advise people go through a klepto phase, but it, uh, it can happen. Like I said, if you're not actively directing your energies in a good direction. They're going to go somewhere. Going to go somewhere. Yeah. And it was, it was the same thing, man. Around that age, just like me and a bunch of dudes running around trying to keep ourselves fucking entertained with no money get, yeah see what you can get away with <laughs> see what you can get away with man yeah. that was a lot of it for sure yeah. for sure so yeah it's just a different fucking world now I definitely it's just yeah it's fun that was fun yeah it was fun but I don't advise it I don't but again we talked about it right like those things that you you like hope like oh man because the, the situations that created that, I mean, you know, it was, uh, uh, you hope to create a better situation for your kids so that they're not necessarily in those kinds of situations, you know, because you and I are both in those situations because like, you know, I, I know for me, like my parents, you know, not that they didn't care about me, but like they weren't around, like they had other things they were worried about. It wasn't like I had this like super positive, you know, uh, you know, my parents were divorced and lived with my mom and my stepdad. And, you know, so I wanted to go hang out with my friends because I didn't want to be at home. And so you want to try to create a situation where like your kids like want to be at home or like enjoy like, you know, being with you 
And so it is tough. It is, you know, but you know, yeah, I, I try to, cause it's funny. It's like, I try to avoid letting Shiloh get in situations where she can be like, have that stuff happen. Right. Like she was actually, uh, like at the mall with one of her friends and one of her friends was like, you know, I don't know if she was talking about it or actually did like try to shoplift something. So in, uh, and it's like, man, yes, this is why you don't let just like teenage kids go to the mall, uh, unregulated. And then I'm like, but man, I used to do it, all the, do it all the time. <laughs> I know. And dude, it's so tough, dude. And yeah, we've talked about this many times. Yeah, dude, there's so many. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do? What do you, what, what do, you do? It's such a tough thing because you want, you know, you, you got to let your kid learn and make mistakes and discover who they are and figure things out. But you don't want them to fuck themselves up in the long run by right. making a severe mistake. Yeah. You still so got your responsible it, parent. Right, right. Exactly. So it, it is, it's a delicate balance. Yeah. Right? There's no clear cut answer to it. Yeah. Cause it all depends on your kid too. What's your kid like? What kind of personality does your kid have? What kind of friends is he hanging out with or she hanging out with? Yeah. Like it's, man, it's not an easy thing, man. No, man. It is not an easy thing. Don't steal is the bottom line. No, don't steal. Definitely not. I mean, it, you, you can find other ways to, yeah. Challenge the Challenge system. yourself. <laughs> Challenge the system, exactly. But, uh, yeah. Because it does. Like, I, I I easily could have had the cops called on me. Fuck yeah. You know? And then that would have been a different scene. And... and That could have changed the course of your life. For sure. Know? For sure. I mean, that, that's the thing. Is like, there's a lot of innocent shit that you do as a kid that looking back, you're like, okay, that's just what kids do. But the reality is, is like, you're not supposed to do it because... Every once in a while, somebody does pay a price. When those for kids it. always get that little bit of a stink on them, you know, they we all had it. You know, a kid that get a, got caught doing something. Yeah. One of the things we just talked about gets arrested. Well, dude, once you get into the legal system, it's so hard to get out. Yeah. Even at a young age, and then you just have that stink on you. You know, you oh, because then all the teachers and parents know. Oh, he got arrested. So even if you clear all your legal shit up, your fines, your community service, whatever you have to do, people still know. And yeah. the community still, oh, he got arrested. Yep. And then that's hard to shake because then people don't, they don't give you a, a fair shake to, you know, come, you know, correct yourself. Yeah. And just, it's not just a mistake. There's always, oh yeah, let Tommy come over. But then they're always like, hey, he got caught stealing. Let's keep an eye on him. Right, right. And Put you know, the silverware away. But, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and the kids feel that. Yeah. yeah you, you know when there's a weird vibe. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, yeah, dude. It is. There's a fine line, right? It it's is. like on one, until you get caught, it's like, oh, it's just innocent shit the kids do. And then as soon as you fucking get arrested, it's like, it's something different. Yeah. And like that, that is the tough thing. So, I mean, just like fighting, right? Like yeah. most of the time, it's not, a, you know, whatever. Like, you know, it is what it is. But man, every once in a while, something happens where somebody gets seriously hurt or killed or like the, they decide to press legal charges and then you're in the system for that. So like, that's another one of those things where you're like, you know, fights happen and boys are going to have fights and blah, blah, blah. But at the same token, by the same token, it's like, man, you need to avoid those. Like my message has to be, you need to avoid those things at all costs because like these severe consequences can happen, you know? So yeah, it's that, that balancing act between knowing what, reality is and trying to keep them on the right side of stuff so yeah we live in a strange time oh man yeah they're all strange times i guess if you're living through them so i mean i'm reading a bunch of books on like the late 1800s early 1900s i finished that gandhi churchill book dude you remember gandhi was assassinated was he somebody shot the motherfucker <laughs> yeah i don't know shit about gandhi <laughs> because he wasn't fucking like like nationalist enough like his whole thing was like you know the independence for india but part of it was that he wanted to like a united india he like you have uh like three main um like basically like religious sects in that area you know you got your hindus you got your muslims and then you got your uh i think the sikhs is the the third one and then uh um so just the way things played out, you know, you have a majority and the minority is always afraid of the majority. And because, you know, these are like religious based, uh, things. Right. And so, um, so he wanted like United India and a bunch of people did it. They wanted like, they were like, you know, 
fuck those other people. Like, we want our thing. And, you know, and because he was Hindu, like, other Hindus were mad at him because he was trying to include, like, the Muslims and the Sikhs and, like, have a united thing. And so, yeah, he got shot for not being Hindu enough. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, he's at, like, the heart of helping to... to Unite people. To, yeah, to get, like... Uh, well, actually, man, again, reading the history, there was a lot of fucking violence. Like, his whole thing of non-violence and, uh, you know, non-aggression and, like, the, the myth of Gandhi is... it It's, you know, mostly there, but, like, when you read the true, the whole story, you realize, like, oh, that's a little bit of a myth. Because we both remember that movie when we were a mm -hmm. kid, and that's kind of what we base our our understanding of Gandhi on is like kind of that movie and kind of the, the, the message behind him when that movie was coming out, which is like, you know, he was this, you know, great religious guy who uh, used nonviolence to force the British empire to grant independence to India. Right. Is that yep. pretty about much right? That's about the extent of my knowledge of it. Yeah. 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 And again, that's not untrue, but the truth is like, you know, one so much more interesting and, and but it is way more complex because like there was a lot of violence that happened and you know some of his campaigns set off violence and so you know he only had a couple like really successful non-violence campaigns and you know it was it was really like the times like cuz again like you know you had World War 1 and World War 2 going on so the British Empire was in a position where they couldn't like they needed India to not revolt because they couldn't deal with a revolt and so, like, those were the conditions that Gandhi was in. You know, if Gandhi was in fucking Germany with Hitler, like, I mean, we kind of saw it like Tiananmen Square, right? Like, what really, you know, what can happen when you have a non-violence campaign against a ruthless government that will inflict violence on you? And so, uh, but those were the conditions, you know, that he, that he was able to kind of, you know, do this stuff in. And so they ended up, you know, he, he was like centrally, you know, part of the political scene there. And helped to uh, you know you know get things going. So he definitely had a big hand in it, but it was way more complicated than that. Like I said, there was a lot of fucking violence, a lot of bloodshed along the way, and it just erupted into violence when like the British pulled out. And so that's why you have Pakistan and India. Like that all used to be one area. Like when the when the, the British Empire controlled India, that was all India. But Pakistan became the Muslim part and. Hmm. India became the Hindu part, and I think it's, um, Bangladesh, I think, became like the Sikhs. Like, eventually, they all got their own area, and, you know, yeah, it was, it's fucking crazy, but... What, what put you on this path to read about this stuff? Dude, I don't know. I was reading, uh, oh, the guy who wrote The the Cave and the Light, that book on uh, philosophy, the, the history of Western philosophy, starting with Plato and Aristotle... Which is so funny because now I see it everywhere, man. It's like you see Richard Dawkins and, and he is so Aristotle, right? And, he, and he's so anti-Plato. Like there's there's no forms. If you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. And it's like, dude, you're Aristotle. Like, you know what I mean? Like these people think they're fucking brilliant. And it's like this is this argument, like once you see it, has been played out. Oh, you know, like Gandhi was was Plato, right? Like, the, you know, we we're he was, he was a religious man. His whole thing was about trying to, uh, you know, achieve... You know, knowing that there's a higher form for humans, like we can be more than we are and we need to try to work towards achieving that, you know, versus like, you know, there's nothing but what we can measure. And so, but uh, anyways, he wrote that book and I really like that. And the guy's name is Arthur Herman. And so uh, I saw he wrote that book on Gandhi and Churchill. And so I just liked his writing style, I liked how he, he uh, you know, weaves stories and, and historical stuff together. He's very Dan Carlin. Is he? It's very hardcore history. That's yeah, it's like a good. written hardcore history. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah I like Dan Carlin's style. He's very, it's very... It's easy. It's entertaining, easy to entertaining, follow. Entertaining, easy to follow. Yeah. Very, like... Yeah, very... That, that's it why I like it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that's what I, I think of it. And so... Um, and then the one I'm reading now is on Douglas MacArthur. And same thing. He wrote that one. That's another. But the time period, like Churchill and Gandhi and MacArthur... They're all the same time period, which is like the late 1800s to like early, mid 1900s. And man, that was a fucking crazy time. Crazy time. Like, dude, like I don't see how you didn't think the world was coming to an end on some level. Like two world wars, like all the shit that happened. 
Um, yeah. So anyways, but my point is, is like, yeah, we, we live in crazy times, but there's always been, crazy they've been times. always, there's always been crazy times. So I can only imagine, man. I'm just trying to think like, you know, what would it be like in 1914 to know that like, we're about to go to world war. To war, world war, world war, like it's been raging and we're getting sucked the fuck into it. And you know, what's crazy. You think about that. I've thought about that on a couple of occasions. Well, then think about the mindset of going into World War II. Like, we've already experienced that as a nation. Yeah. And then 30 years later or whatever, right? 1914, yeah, roughly 30 years later, 1940-something. Yeah. 1941, I think. Yeah, I always remember it, 19, like, 1914, 1941. It's an easy way to remember to swap yeah. the one and the four, roughly, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, yeah, you, like, you already experienced that as a nation, like, 30 years ago. So, I mean, it is very feasible that... Your grandpa was in World War One. You and were then, in fucking then, World War One, and, and then yeah, or, uh, you, you were in World there War. There were a lot of these dudes who fought like in both. You were in World War One, and then maybe you could end up in World War Two, or your grandson or your son could be in World War Two. Yeah. You already experienced it, and then to have to go through that again, like you know what you're getting into, it's just like fuck. Yeah, dude. dude. If you went in, a, if you fought World War One at, at twenty. Like, World you, War II was happening old. in your late 40s at 50, 50 years yep. old. Like, you would still be in the army. You, you would could be, still be. You would be, like, up the chain. You could still be involved, for sure. Yeah, no, that's what happened. a lot of these guys. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, we think of these things as, like, separate historical events. But when you read about, like, the history of the people who went through them, you realize, like, these aren't, like, th this. these people experienced all of this as just one Thing. Yep. And they, they they were involved in both. It was it, to them World War One and World War Two were one event for the most part. And they sandwiched the Great Depression. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In between it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 man. Hard fucking time. Right. And even going into that, like we were fucking fighting Mexico. Yeah. Like that's what got uh one of the things that got uh um the US into World War One was the Germans offering western the western united states to mexico if mexico would Take declare over. war on us if we declared war on them and like we intercepted that uh telegraph or whatever you know however the fuck they pigeon. got it yeah <laughs> and uh yeah and that was one of the other things you know that forced uh i guess well woodrow wilson to finally go to war he did not want to do it but i mean uh just had to do it. So, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. They're going over to World War One. MacArthur is uh, getting ready to fucking lead some men over there. But it's all, like, we had no army at that time. Like, after the Civil War, like, when General, that was, that was the crazy thing. The way that he put it, like, when MacArthur was born was four years after Little Bighorn. Like, he was literally born in, like, a Old West Civil War style outpost you know, lived out on the Western frontier. Like he, when he was born, you know, uh, you know, um, fucking Geronimo was still trying to break out. And, you know, so, and then when he died, we were going to Vietnam. And it's like so weird to think that like, like, again, like you think of these things as such separate dis time periods, but like one man's life basically spanned like, from Little Bighorn to the Vietnam War. That's insane. That's crazy. When you think about it like that, it's like, wow. Like, it's just, yeah. So, and to live through all the shit that happened and to see it is, uh, um, it's kind of mind-blowing to think about. So, of course, I'm sure people say the same thing about us. I mean. Maybe. We live through the technological revolution, man. Yeah, I got to figure out what I'm going to read next. I'm just about done with Shogun, that James, oh, yeah. James Clavel book, okay. my 13, 1400 page book. Yeah. I only got, I'm less than 100 pages left. It, it's been a good read. It's been a long read. You know, and I've been, you know, busy as of late, so I haven't been reading as much. I still read every day, but sometimes it's just not very much. Yeah. But I'm just about to wrap that up. It's, it's a good book, a good challenge to read that big of a book. Nice. So I got to figure out what I'm going to read next. I'd recommend that Cave in the Light. I think yeah. you'd like it. Yeah. Just the, the whole like history of philosophy, the Western philosophy, um, putting a lot of, you know, people in a context, like where they fit in the, you know, again, like, you know who Adam Smith is, you know who, uh, you know, Voltaire is, but how do they kind of, you know, where, 
how do they fit together again in like the stream? Cause you know, it, it's been a, again, humans have, uh, you know, they continue to evolve and, and the, the, how they think and, you know, d- different philosophies come up and the other ways look at, of looking at stuff. And so, um, yeah, for me, it was really good just to, to see that. Like I enjoyed that cause it kind of put a lot of people in a context as far as like where they fit in the, the lineage of Western thought. That's nice to be able to do that. Cause it does, it gives you that context of just some random historical figure. Yeah. It, 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 it puts it in a place for you so you can categorize it in your head. Like, Oh, okay. I get yeah. I see. I can kind of plug that and play in this day and age. Like this is this person. This is yeah. 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 Helps so, you remember it and yeah, make sense of it a little bit more. Make sense of it. I, I felt like it. I felt like I came out of reading that book like a better thinker. Like just I, I felt like I just had a much better understanding again of that tension. Cave in the light. You the said? cave in the light. Put yeah. that in my notes right now before I forget. Yep. It's similar to that. Uh, oh god. I can't remember. The, the, I know the dude. I can see, see him in my head. I can remember the book. But his whole thing was uh, like the tension between like Jerusalem and Athens. I think I talked about that before. You know, between like uh, philosophy and then like, you know, the Western, just kind of the Judeo-Christian values. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of along that lines. But Plato, it's interesting because you see how a lot of the Platonic, like Plato's thoughts were adopted and co-opted into uh, Christianity. And so kind of how we view religion a lot is shaped by the Plato uh, side of the camp. And then again, like science is that other extreme and that's like Aristotle's side of the camp. And again, that like the tension between the two is really what drives the uh, like cool stuff to happen. But every once in a while, the other side starts to take over too much. So and then you, you got to pull it back the other way. So that's what we're going through now, I think. We're pulling things pretty hard to the science side. It was funny, man. I, that Richard Dawkins interview on Joe Rogan was pretty entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know, he's... it's uh, He's just setting his ways. He he's is. old setting his ways. And yeah. He, that's just like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, cause he said something that, you know, like... I think they were talking about, you know, death and what happens. He's like, you die and that's it. That's it. And they're like, well, how do you know? How do you know you that don't, exactly? You don't know. It's hypocritical uh, for him to be so yes. sure of something that he doesn't know and then be mad, like, and, and, and like have like, you know, uh, make fun of people who are so sure that, that there is something. Right. And it's like, when either one of you know, like his no whole thing knows. is like a, a true, it's not atheist. It should be agnostic, right? Like agnostic admits like, I don't know. Right? Atheist is the opposite of religious, right? Religious is, I am sure there is something. Atheist is, I am sure there isn't something. Agnostic is, I don't know. If I real like, I may have a leaning one way or the other, but if I'm really going to be honest about it, I don't know. And so, like, that's really, if you're being intellectually honest, what you are. And that, you know, that's that middle ground where religious people and atheists can meet and have discussions, but man, you're, you're just as foolish being an atheist as you are an ultra-religious person. Right. Like, if you can't admit that you don't really know and, and to be able to, to not, yeah, to not, like, get emotionally involved, because that's the thing, man. Like, he's, he tries to pretend like he's detached, but you can tell, like, there no, that, is, That's his identity. Yeah, there's, he has negative feelings towards people that believe in religion. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was, what did he say? Something like, uh... Like Joe said something like, oh, so you're just, you know, reductionist. And he's like, there's nothing wrong with being reductionist. And, and Joe's like, oh, I guess there's not. And it's like, besides the fact that it's been shown time and time again to not work, like, like relying on, like you can make mistakes only relying on reductionism because there are bigger things at play that you can't measure through just reductionism. And, you know, if you can't, like, that's the whole, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist basic uh mindset and so it's like yeah but there's there's something wrong with both ways of thinking and and you have to be able to admit the flaws in both of them so that you can use them both to arrive at, at like some sort of like i think better conclusion but when you're just like ah it's you know you're just as foolish as them just as foolish because it's the same foolishness it's the whole not liking to not know something 
and just saying, hey, this is the way it is. You know, there's nothing after we die or there is no God or there is a God. People feel comfort in knowing something. A lot of people don't like not knowing something. And so they just kind of pick one camp or the other. Yeah. And they scoff at the other camp. Yeah, yeah, You fools. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Like, hey, neither one of you motherfuckers know. Neither one knows, man. I know. The whole thing, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. Is just so... Again, if I don't understand how you can be a scientist and really like fall back on that so hard because you're always you're able to measure new things all the time. Like we, we there's there's so many times that like oh you know like like the sports sciences I guess because I come from that side are like a prime example of how what you can measure becomes like this this the central theory right. So like the whole like how do we think that lactate was responsible for muscle soreness? Well, just we had very crude measuring systems for what was going on side of muscles. We had, you know, the cardiovascular side. We were, we were getting more, uh, you know, we it was a little bit more along the way. But man, for a long time, measuring what was going inside the muscles was difficult. You had to do painful muscle biopsies and all this shit, and so you just didn't have an efficient way to measure what was happening. But because that's all they could measure, that's all there was. Oh, lactate is present when the muscle is fatigued, and so therefore lactate is causing this. And then you get more sophisticated ways to measure what's happening inside the muscle, and you realize, oh wait, that's not what's going on. And so to act like that couldn't happen again, like there's some way that we wouldn't be able to find some way to measure the soul. Mm-hmm. Right? Is is uh It's basically just saying like, oh, you're drawing a line at this date and time. Yep. Like we're not going to discover anything new no. from this point out. There's no new discoveries. No to new be discoveries. Made. We've discovered everything, everything in this universe. That that was the attitude that I yeah. got from him. Was like everything that is is we've discovered everything. We can explain everything with what we've discovered. That's the end of the discussion. We're done. And it's like, dude, how can you be a student? How can you be a scientist and a student of of history and and like have that kind of hubris? Like that is insane. But he. He does it, I, I understand on one level, because when you're trying to talk to people who are so far on the other side, you have to come off on the extreme other side just to try to get something in the middle. And so, like, I kind of think maybe that's like, just from a lifetime of having to take on that attitude to get people on the other extreme to... It's a whole Donald Trump uh, method of negotiating. Yes. You know, just start high and ridiculous and go big. Yep. And then you know they're not going to go for it, so then they come back, and that's yeah. actually what you were expecting anyways. It's, it's the same Yeah, but you just take on a character for, yep. and then it, you become that character, and then you don't realize, like, dude, you look a little ridiculous you being this character. So, yeah, but that, was, uh, that was interesting. He had some good points and stuff, but again, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, but we really still don't know. So, like, why are we being so, uh, like, just fucking anyone who believes in religion is an idiot. It's like, whoa, pump the brakes, buddy. Easy, buddy. Pump the brakes. Like, that makes no sense. Like, why does every society have a religion? Like, you know, again, if you're a scientist and you believe that in the whole, like, well, you know, uh, you know, theory of, uh, um, you know, survival of the fittest and theory of evolution, right? It's like whatever survives has to have some sort of evolutionary advantage for people or they wouldn't do it. And so, like, well, why do we all have religion? So even even if... You know, it turns out that like exactly what they're saying isn't necessarily true. There's still something positive going on here. And so like you, like that was, uh, actually that was one of the things I realized like from Gandhi, right? Like Gandhi's goal was to change the color line in the British empire. And along the way, he ended up doing that by destroying the British empire. So the color line's gone, but you didn't really move it, right? Like you just... You destroyed the context within which it existed. And like that's what I feel like people are trying to do with religion is like, you know, they're not trying to move the line to get people to be less fundamental about like, you know, you know, God hates gays or, you know, whatever that is, right? Because that's what people point to is like, well, look at these religious fundamentalists and how ridiculous they are. You know, we got to get them to stop being so ridiculous. And the answer is to like move the line, not destroy the context in which the line exists. exists. Yeah. And because, again, like you saw in India, like fucking shit breaks down. And, and when you take that, like there was, there was, you know, if you take that away, if you take that scaffolding away without having a good plan, because that was the problem with India, was like they had to, ba- they just got out of there, 
they didn't have the resources or the time to really plan it properly, right? And so it turned into a fucking shit show. And like, that's the same thing is like, man, you're trying to like, you don't have anything to replace the other things that religion is doing for society. And so you destroying that because you see these, these little fringe elements that need work, you know, you want to bring these down so bad that you're willing to destroy the whole scaffolding that, that has some positive effects without replacing with anything. Like what's going to, what's going to happen, right? Like there's, I, there's going to be chaos. It's not going to be pretty. There's a reason that scaffolding's there in the first place. There's a reason that every society that's ever existed pretty much has had some form of that scaffolding in place. So that's the, yeah, that's what I, I was, when I was reading, I was like getting that like, like, yeah, dude, like destroying the context in which something exists doesn't mean you're actually changing this thing. And you're going to have a lot of unintended consequences when you do that. So, but that's the easier way to do it. It's, it's a lot harder to try to change that line. And sometimes you get frustrated, so you're just like, fuck it. Destroy it Destroy all. Destroy it all. <laughs> yeah. That's what Aka says. Destroy it all. Destroy it all. So, man, um, did you see Ben Askren retired? And I had caught a little glimpse of an article I didn't follow up on. Good. Yeah, we were just yeah. talking about it. I thought it was ironic that we were like discussing it a few, some length. A few length, weeks ago or something. A few weeks ago, yeah. and like a couple of days later, I saw he's retiring, and it's like, yeah. That's good. I'm glad for him. Yeah. It is interesting, though. Like, that's got to be the most anticlimactic uh, trade in MMA history. I mean, we were all ready for I was, I was on that. Ashton Khabib, train. man. Yeah. I was, it's, that, that was so long ago that you almost kind of forget it. It sounds so ridiculous But it to wasn't say. that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. And it was like, it was like, dude, we just got to get him a couple tune-up fights. You know, we just got to go in there and beat up a couple people to kind of get that, you know, the a legit reason for a title shot. And it's like, you know, him and fucking Khabib. But he didn't even, he, dude, he didn't have any easy fights. Like his no. first, his first one in the UFC was Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler, Lawler right? that yeah. super controversial that win. That was kind of, yeah, I mean, he got dumped on his head and almost finished in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. And then it went and, downhill from there. Yeah, and yeah, he didn't have a good run in the UFC. Yeah, you know, I think, yeah, it's a funny thing. It's always hindsight, you know, maybe, yeah, but he was so successful, but he was just fighting a bunch of Chinese dudes that didn't know how to wrestle as good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just what it is. Yeah, it's a different different thing. Different thing, man. We we I I didn't think it was that much of a different thing, but apparently it was. Yeah. So Yeah, I mean you know, it's tough, man. He's at a different point in his life. Yeah, dude. The dude's I mean, been fucking wrestling forever. His whole life, dude. Yeah. His whole the kid dude's been wrestling since he was probably six years old, yeah. man. He's been a competitive athlete. Yep. And hey, man, he's had a I'm good not, run at it. Yeah, I'm not faulting the dude at all. No, not at all. It's, it's, it, may, it, it makes sense. Yeah. I'm glad. To I'm see glad it. to see it. Instead of him just still trying to like, oh, no, I'm going to make this happen. Yeah. He realized, like, hey, I don't need to be getting punched in the head anymore. Yep. This isn't worth it. I like to wrestle. I can teach kids how to wrestle. I can, you know, yep. I can still get on the mat and train and wrestle and I don't have to take brain damage. You know, this is not worth my time. No. That's it. Good yeah. for him. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah. For, for sure. So, but... It was one of those times when we actually got something right. So Few and far between. Yeah, yeah, man. But I just wanted to make sure we acknowledged that. <laughs> acknowledged it. Had ourselves in the back. That's right, so man. We, we are right once in a while. We predicted Ben Askren's retirement before it happened. Stay tuned here for news a week after it happens. <laughs> That's right. That's our fucking motto. Yep. So, um, yeah. And then uh, what else do I have here? I, when you're walking in, Kiel and I were talking about fake gay people. Fake gay people? Yes. So this thing where you're a dude who identifies as a woman, but you're a lesbian, so you still like women. You're going to have to repeat that. No, 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 I, no. I, You've I got, heard this. This is I not a... Lost. I know, but I got lost in that. No, no. We're basically like you are one sex that identifies as the other sex. Okay. But you identify as a gay person of that sex. Okay. So that you you still like what you would normally biologically like. Okay. I so like yep. a guy can still go out with a woman, but he's Identify actually a, a transgender gay person. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Tell me that does not open the gateway for fake gay people. Yep. I mean, even if you don't, you, it, like you can't tell me there's like, 
there's not a certain percentage of people who are gonna who are just like, dude, I want in on this. You know what I mean? Like maybe not even consciously, but they never even would have fucking thought of it before. But now it's like, you know, that's what's wrong with me. Like I love women, but I'm a gay man. Or I'm a gay woman. Like that's why you know, like I'm it a- just all I, when you're saying all these words and terms and. I just, it screams his mental illness. <laughs> they, come on now. Not, doesn't it, though? It does. It's got to. Like, yeah. I hate it, to say it. Maybe it's harsh, but come on, it, man. Yeah. Well, really? that was one of the things that got me thinking is like, the there was a, a stabbing at um, Junction High. and Just recently? It was a few weeks ago. Like, it's been, I guess, a little bit. It's been within the last couple months. Okay. But the stabbing was between a couple. And the couple was a dude who identifies as a girl... And a girl who identifies as a guy, and so they're a gay couple, but they're still like dating a boy and a girl. Then this is going on at Grand Junction High School. Yes. And the girl got jealous or something. The girl who's a guy got jealous of the guy who's the girl and ended up like fucking stabbing him a few times. But <laughs> sorry, I should No, 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 but here's the thing you're going to love even more that wraps up even more fucking craziness into it. The guy was so fat that he was fine. Like, you know, they took him to the hospital, stitched him up a little bit and he was out. And and literally it was because he was so fat. Like if he had not it been did, fat, it didn't, it didn't penetrate any, any internal organs or, or, organs or anything, anything like that. Yep, just stabbed his fat a few times, <laughs> stitched him up. So, and he was gone. It should my ass. It's like, dude, that's so. There's so many fucking so much crazy going, things. So much going on with that. Yeah. So many broken things <laughs> into society that says that's okay. It's so ridiculous. Dude. And and but like you are the school can't not only not say anything. They have to like, um, I don't know what the word is. Like they not encourage it, but like you know, create a welcoming environment for that. Right. Like, you, cause you can't, you have to, you have to, it's not even that you can ignore it, like, and just be neutral towards it. You have to be positive towards it. Cause anything less than being positive towards it means that you're being negative towards why it. Could, red. I guess I, why couldn't you just ignore it as a system? You know what I mean? Like if, so you got some 15 year old kid running around claiming he identifies as a woman Okay, fuck it. Whatever, man. You can identify. Show up and do your work. I don't give a shit. You can identify whatever you want. Get good grades. I don't give yeah. a fuck. Do your, do your homework. Yeah. Like, well, that's the problem. Is like School is more about like this social engineering thing and, and socializing than actually learning. Right, right? right. So it's like, well, that's the problem. Like, why, is, why are they going to school? Are they going to school to, you know, make social statements? And like, because that's the whole thing. Like, I mean, at one point, I still remember when, like, you weren't supposed to fucking hold a girl's hand in school. Like, I remember in junior high, I think, like, you know, you had, like, you definitely weren't fucking kissing in the hallway, right? Like, public displays of affection at school were restricted at one point in time. It's it's still not that way? No. No. I fucking highly doubt it. Oh, I I, I just assumed it was still that way. No. I mean, I figured kids could hold hands, but that's where the line draws. I don't know. Maybe. I could be totally wrong. But the point is, is like, why, you know, these things don't, if we're there to educate kids, like, what the fuck is this shit doing there as, like, a part of it? Right. Right? If we're there to socialize kids, that's fine. But, again, it's like, I don't know. I I don't care, right? It's the, why do we, why do we have to celebrate and be, like, fucking positive and create this environment where it's, like, almost where you're, uh. I don't know. It's just, like you said, the, the 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 pendulum, at one point, you had to feel bad if you were gay. And it's like, well, that one's not good. So now we got to fucking swing the pendulum the other way. But then it starts to get to be where, like, you feel bad if you're not gay. Or if you're not, like, actively supporting someone who's gay. And so, it's like, I don't know. It's a weird... Back to what I said, it's a weird time. I just don't know what the fuck, why does it matter? Like, why does it matter? matter? Who cares? I know, like, why do we... Like, just be a good person. Yeah. Do, do what's expected of you. Be a good person. Yeah. That's it. You can, you can call yourself whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. But well, just, it, you don't have to fucking, like, shove it in my face. No. Like, that's the thing that, it, for me, is like, I don't want it shoved in my face. I don't want it shoved in my kids' faces. 
it's like do your thing, man. Live your life. But exactly. Just don't have to like flaunt it and shove it in our face. And then anyone who says like, hey, man, I don't really like you flaunting that and shoving it in my face. You're anti-gay or right. you're anti this or you're, an- you know what I mean? Like you can't say anything negative. You know what I mean? Like saying something negative about a, a, a biological male who competes as a woman against other women and is like whooping their ass. You know what I mean? Like you can be called like transpho like that, like that's, you can't say negative shit about it. And it's like, that's not good either. So somewhere in the middle is better, but I don't know. Like, I don't know what got me thinking about it, but I'm like, dude, that is such like someone who's, who's like, likes the idea of being gay, but doesn't really want to be gay. Like, that's a great way to do it. Like you are, you identify, you identify as the other sex, as the other sex who's gay. So solves you can that still date right the same biological thing and solves the problem. So it's my cynical asshole side. I just never heard of such a thing in my life. And then all of a sudden you're just like, you hear about it on a semi-regular basis. Like it's a thing. It's a thing now. And you know, cause there's, there's the, the thing like people will say like, Hey, if, if you know, like if you identify it as a woman and wouldn't, and I won't date you, I'm, I'm like, you know, homophobic or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or, or whatever it is. It was like, I, I, I forget, but it's like, what? What the fuck, man? Why do we even? Why is this even fucking a discussion? Yeah, exactly. Why is why, it being, why is it being talked? Why about? is it being talked about? This is ridiculousness. But you know, I don't know. People had need something to talk about, like us. Yeah. Again, it goes back to people just don't have enough struggle in their life. Need yeah. to take up some difficult hobbies or tasks or something. Yeah. And it squishes. It just you don't worry about that kind of nonsense. You need some fucking struggle, man. Need some struggle. Yeah, it's, things are too easy. Things are too easy. So, yeah, I need some more jiu-jitsu. Yeah. For sure. So, yeah, which uh, kind of brings me to the announcement of our new Fruit of BJJ gym we're going to be doing. Been uh, found us a space. Been talking with Kevin and going to do some sort of like partnership between. Some collab. Some collaboration. Yep, definitely setting up under, you know, under him. So, we're still... You know, my plan is, I mean, the idea is, uh, you know, where I live, we're, like, we're in a separate town. Mm-hmm. I mean, Fruit is a different town than Grand Junction. I mean, and there's not even like, like there is a significant amount of blank space between Fruita and Grand Junction. It's not even like Clifton or Orchard Mesa where, you know, kind of like the, the sprawl just turns into it, right? And so I live about 15 plus minutes away and I'm as close as you can get if you live in Fruita to the gym. And so there's a lot of people who live, you know, 20 plus minutes away and that's just a tough drive. And so, uh, so there's a lot of people that like could have, like could use jujitsu that don't, aren't able to have access to it. Like I just know from when I ran a, a you know, the, my fitness facility that the statistics are, and they spend a lot of time and money figuring this shit out. Cause you got to figure out where to spend your, your money marketing. But anything outside of 15 minutes a drive is tough for people to commit to on a long-term basis, especially like multiple times a week. Like most people just like aren't going to do it. And so getting something going out here, we're going to get people into the jujitsu scene who wouldn't have like, you know, necessarily done it. And so, yeah, the idea is like we'll be able to grow the jujitsu scene and still like, you know, have it be part of what's going on at grand valley and uh so yeah we're pretty fucking excited exciting. about it yeah it's, that thing's pretty exciting yeah we got our, our space you know sign on our space on tuesday we we're talking about mats you're a fan of the zebra mats we were talking to tommy versus smooth and <laughs> all the other uh yeah stuff. A, i do i mean i like i said before i like the tommy but i know it's probably not maybe what's best for the gen pop a new gym that's new just gym. starting with new people, <laughs> new people like and have a lot of new white belts you're just gonna form bad habits people wanting to wear socks because the feet get tore up yeah so yeah kinda. i get it I, I think smooth is probably the more intelligent way to go yeah unfortunately unfortunately yeah it is that break-in period man yeah. once the broke in the tommy mats are the jam yeah but you gotta have that break-in period yeah so yeah we're gonna Get uh, like what, like five hundred square feet, five six hundred square feet, this mat space, and 
you know, get a little room mat out, get our maces and some other little fitness stuff in there. We're gonna do some. I don't know. I mean, it's funny. Like at this point, they're just the grumpy guy classes. I got to figure out something else to call them. But do uh, we're gonna be doing fitness classes? But they're gonna be kind of like that flavor, I mm-hmm. guess. So we're gonna have some that are just exactly like what we're doing with uh, you know the active warm up and then the isometrics and then the mobility. And then I'm going to play around with some, some other stuff, kind of like maybe some circuit based, uh, stuff where you're doing like an isometric and then like a movement based exercise. And, um, yeah, just, there's, there's a lot of different, uh, possibilities once you start mixing in things like isometrics and the mace and things. So I want to try to come up with some pretty cool, unique, but effective, uh, fitness classes as well that'll you know serve the people at the gym like help them with their fitness needs but it'll also be good because it'll give me something like because i still want to do my mountain biking stuff out of there i mean i'm still you know bike james and got all that stuff so uh you know those those workouts will allow me to get people who aren't necessarily into jujitsu into the gym because i can still market them to mountain bikers and, and have like a you know a, a fitness membership where you know they can just come do the fitness classes but then, you know, of course you're here, you're doing some fitness classes, you like everyone here. And what are those people doing over there in their pajamas? Yeah, man. Beating here. each other or up. Or throw a gi on, here, man, here. And, and give it a shot, you know? So uh, I think it'd be a good way to kind of expose some other, other people to jujitsu. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of the, the plan. The future is bright. The future is bright, man, yeah. Get the kids program going. Mm-hmm. That's really like what... what like I've been thinking about this for a while, like really ever since I moved back to Fruta and just, you know, for whatever reason, time wasn't right. But man, I had this, when I was thinking about it a couple weeks ago, I had this realization that like, there's no martial arts in Fruta. Like that's crazy that like, if you're a kid and I mean, we both benefited from martial arts as a kid. Yep. I mean, I think it's like, like fucking super important like if you can have a kid if you have a kid and they can do martial arts like they should i think it's like one of those important things for kids to do and uh but man if you're a kid and you live in fruta you better hope your parents are willing to drive you to junction and if they're not then you just don't get to do martial arts and i don't know something didn't sit right with me with that realization that it was like damn dude like i i, I kind of have to do it I mean, it's not like there's another option and I'm just like, oh, do I want to add mine? It's like, no, man, I, there are kids in this town who are, who can benefit from martial arts in their life. Like it could change their life for the, for the better. And right now they're just not going to get the opportunity. Whereas like if they have a gym in Fruta, like you are going to have kids that are going to come to that gym that would not have been able to do it if they had to go to Grand Valley just because their parents weren't gonna drive them there for whatever reason and so it's like dude if you you know like these kids being able to impact their lives that way you know it's almost like when you have that realization and then like how, how do I not act on that you know what I mean like for me to walk away from that realization I feel is like I, I don't know what the word is but it's like no like I have a responsibility on some level like I'm, I'm walking away from people that could use my help you know, and so that, that made it different. You know, it wasn't just like, do I want to open a jujitsu gym or not? It's like, there's people out here that need my help. Like this could be, su- this could be a fucking huge changing point in their life doing what, what, you know, doing jujitsu as a kid. And for, yeah, I, I can, I can offer them that opportunity. And for me to not do it is like, I don't know. It doesn't sit right with me. So it's kind of, it's hard to explain, but it's like... No, I think you explained it. Yeah. Adequately. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so there's more to it than just like, I definitely want to open a, a gym, but it was really that realization of like, man, we can impact people's lives and we're just not doing it and I'm just being a lazy piece of shit. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, I don't know if it's that. <laughs> I mean, on some level, you know, I mean, that's, uh, you know, I'm comfortable with my existence. I mean, the thought of opening a gym, right? Like... You're going to have to, I, my, my, the floatiness of my schedule is going to get much less floaty. Yes. 
And so, you know, I've enjoyed having a floaty schedule and, you know, been comfortable with it. And so, like, I mean, you know how it is, man. It's hard to fucking over, like, when you have a good situation, yep. it's hard to overcome the gravity of that and, and move towards something that you know is going to fucking be a pain in the ass for a while. It's going to disrupt the, yep. the system you the, got in yep. place. But... At, on the other side of it is something like so much cooler and so much better. I mean, you know, I already told you, my number one goal is we're going to get you hired on to start doing some coaching. And so, I, I mean, in a year, you know, we've got, you know, you know, you're hired on helping do some classes. We got a front desk person who's helping do stuff. I mean, we've got a, you know, the program's built up. So like thinking about like, all right, where's this going to be in a year? Like, man, it could be really fucking awesome. So it makes the grind worth it, but you're still overcoming that, that just the momentum of your daily routine and daily life to get that shit pointed in another direction. Um, it's hard. It can be hard. So it's awesome. Yeah, man. Like I say, I got high hopes. I think it's going to turn out well. Yeah. 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 I think so too. I think we're going to have fun with it. Yep. You got to come up with, uh, like some curriculum stuff. I, I, well, I'm already working on adult curriculum. Okay. I, and the curriculum I'm putting together, you know, we just modify it for kids. Yeah. I mean, that I don't have as much experience coaching kids as I do adults. I feel pretty confident in building a good adult curriculum. Yeah. I'm going to build like a like a 16-week curriculum. Right. Like four months, roughly. Yeah, you know, three or four months. And I'm definitely going to already plan on like, because uh, it's a beginner curriculum. You right. know, having uh, at least one self-defense move a week put in there because I think we're missing that. Currently, I, I think that's an important part. We don't. Need, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. I'm not out there trying to do some fake martial arts bullshit. Just good, solid, simple. Yeah. Self-defense, and then yeah, and then and then the advanced curriculum that's down the road will be more of just an overall framework. Like, hey, we're working on this this month. You can kind of run with it, but the beginner curriculum is laid out. It's Here's the self-defense move for the week. Here's the lesson one and lesson one A for the week one, and so on and so forth. Yeah, like, yeah it's it's already going. Nice man. I, I got to put a little more pen to paper and get it all scheduled out, played out. But well, I'm, very, I'm working on it. Very interested to see yeah. what you uh, what you got. So yeah, that's the that's the fun part is like getting the the like you, you finally have to be forced to create some systems. Based on what you do normally, yep, <clears throat> and you know it, it, it makes you better, right? And like that's that's the thing that excites me really is like I know on one level like you know my jujitsu is going to be tough because I'm not going to be able to train as much with as many higher level people. The plan is still like basically you know Monday through Thursday having classes and still doing like open mat Friday and Saturday at Grand Valley, and so you know still coming in and training, so I'll still be able to roll with everybody those days but as far as like class goes you know it's going to be me working with and and training other people but you know we've talked about it before like man that's coaching is one of the best ways to get better because it forces you to understand what you do on such a level like if you can't explain it to a kid you don't really understand it and so you got to be able to fucking break things down so that you can explain them and so to me that's the, the most exciting thing is like that like uh, knowing the growth opportunity that exists in throwing myself back into coaching like that um is uh yeah i'm really fucking pumped on that that's good so yeah especially like getting in there with the kids and you know because again they're the biggest challenge like you know, you, you you really have to understand shit to be able to explain it to a kid and keep them engaged, keep and them interested, engaged, right? Yeah. Yep, yeah. There's a whole art to to working with kids for sure. So, but uh, I like it. Kids seem to like me most of the time, except for when I'm getting on to my kids. Yeah, when they're not your kids, <laughs> right? Exactly, dude. It's funny. I'm like the opposite of Kiele, man. She's like, oh man, I have trouble dealing with other people's kids. And I'm like, man, I have trouble dealing with my kids. No, I'm kidding. I love my kids. But you know how it is. It's funny, man. It's like anything else. Like you're an out-of-town expert when you go one town over, right? Like you, you're the, you know, you hung out with my kids Saturday mm -hmm. night or when they spent the night at Angela's. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they were pretty fucking good. 
and you know when they hang out here it's just like constant you know i did i had to get after z once i upset him he did like remember you were telling the story about him sighing yes yeah you know huffing and puffing well yeah i forget what the situation was but he did it and he went stomping away because angelo told him no about something i told him no about something he went stomping away huffing and puffing i was like hey he's like your dad just told me you're not supposed to do that when someone tells you no and he tried the old, well, it wasn't because of that. <laughs> I was like, dude. Then, well, okay. I was like, okay. Then what was it? And then he started crying a little bit. I'm like, knock it off. I was like, you're not really crying. You, you know you're not supposed to be doing that. Just knock it off. He, yeah. got, he was upset for about five minutes. And he was like, <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. Because is... it was just that day you got done telling me about it. Yeah. And I was like, hey. Your dad says you can't do that. I'm not going to allow you to get away with it either. Knock it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got a few timeouts over it. He's, he's definitely gotten, like, better. That's the thing with him. Like, he learns pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and that's the, the, the tough part, though, is it's, uh, was I was just rereading, um, I need to reread the book, the Extreme Ownership book, but I found, I came across my little card that I wrote all the, the main things out, and one of them was, it's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. And it was like a reminder, like, dude, I just, I just fucking flap my jaws about so much shit around here. And then I just tolerate, you know, the opposite. And I got to stop. I either need to shut up or I need to stop tolerating it. But like, you can't just, you know, live in that fucking gray area. So uh, that was good. I, I, that was when I was like, all right, you know, cut that out or, you know, anyways, it's been good. But you need that reminder every once in a while because you're always like, fuck, man. I talk to them all the time, and then you realize, like, yeah, but you keep tolerating. But it's it. easier, so it's easier to tolerate it because it, it'll happen, and you're just like, dude, I don't have the energy to deal with this right now. Yes. And like fuck it, and so you just you can just ignore it. Yeah. And then it's like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're ignoring it. It's almost like encouraging bad behavior. Yeah. You know? and you're like, oh shit. All right. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. So, so yeah, so you're uh, you're rolling today, yeah. Huh? Yeah. How's the knee feeling? Feels good, man. Nice. Yeah, again, I'm not pushing it. Technically, I'm not supposed to be, you know, live wrestling until the nine month mark, which right. would be December twelfth. So, but I've been getting in and slowly inoculating myself, you know, light rounds. Do a little drilling. Some... Do, do more drilling, some light rolls with the trusted my trusted training partners. Nice. Um, yeah. It feels good, man. Nice. Yeah. I was gonna train last night, but I ended up working a little bit later than planned. So. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know we've been rolling a few times and I told you it's like dude when I get past your legs the upper body I'm going buddy <laughs> I'm going to take care of your Which legs but if I happen to get past them like I'm going 100% trying to smash <laughs> 100% I agree that's how it should be you know it's still because like it, it's a funny little dance I got to do in my head because there's certain things like I'll go to try to like brace or frame and I'm like ah maybe I shouldn't push so hard with that leg yeah you know so it's I mean, I'm still being very cautious right yeah you know and I'll, I'll get myself into a position I'll be like ah Maybe I shouldn't be here, and so I'll just kind of try to back out safely, or just yeah. you know, it's it, it's it's a funny dance I got to do in my head just to keep myself safe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, same. I mean, I just in general, I try to think about like my partners when I'm rolling and be aware of. Because I mean, I've popped a couple people's knees from doing like they pop their knee or, or whatever, right? So I, I've had some leg yeah. entanglements go really wrong, and. Uh, so maybe just from that, but like I'm always kind of in the back of my mind paying attention to like, it's like, ooh, that does not look like a good position right. for them. Like, and I'll, I'll help them unravel it rather than just continue to fucking go. So it's kind of a natural extension. Like, I, you know, like you said though, it's, uh, yeah, you gotta, um, you gotta watch you get in a position or whatever, like for me. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm kind of smashing his knee a little bit and just, being aware, but it's appreciated. Yeah, but it's it's. I like the. It, it's no different than it's a. Um, I don't know how to put it. Like you know, we talk about like going into a role with a goal, right? So like my my goal is to not fucking hurt your knee. And, you know, it can be like I'm gonna get a Kimura. You know what I mean? Like we've talked about like oh, I'm gonna work this pass or I'm gonna do this or whatever. And it's like, well, what's you know what's the goal of the role? And you can go in with different different uh, focuses, mm-hmm. right? So it's just a. It's just a little fucking focus you give yourself. So on some level, it's like mentally fun because like that's how I'm approaching it is it's just another little like it's a, it's a goal that I'm giving myself for this round. Like I, I want to have a good role with you, but I want to make sure that, you know, I'm not hurting your knee in the process. 
And it's no different than going in being like, you know, I'm going to fucking try and hit this pass on you and, or, or whatever. Right. So it's all in how you frame, frame it. it. Yeah. 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 To me, it's like, dude, I'm it's fucking, it's just as fun doing that as like just going hard and trying to kill each other. I'm looking forward to pushing the pace a little bit today. Yeah. Breaking a good sweat, getting out of breath. Because I'm almost, I mean, shit's December. I mean, it's November, what, 23rd right now. Yeah. So, t- dude, I'm so close. I mean, I'm probably pretty good. You know, right. my leg, as far as, like, there's no pain, you know, everything. It's just, it's a matter of making sure that tendon's strong. And there's mm-hmm. no way to know if that tendon's strong. Yeah. I'm just going by what the surgeon said. He yeah. said nine mo- nine month mark post-surgery is the is kind of the, the hallmark of when that tendon is going to be as strong as it's going to be. Right. And so I'm, I'm there, really. Yeah. So, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to, like, getting out of breath and getting pretty sweaty and moving pretty good today. Nice. Yeah, because I, I, I feel I can do it safely, man. I've been doing a ton of leg stuff, single leg stuff. You know, I, I've i been, I kind of got away from it for a little while, like, trying to do more reps on my right leg than my left leg. And if I'm doing single leg squats or deadlifts, I was kind of doing even for a while. And I was like, oh, fuck, what, why am I doing that? So, I, you know, I'm back. The past couple of weeks, I've been back to like, actually last night I worked out after I got out of work and I was doing single leg squats, you know, with like a kettlebell in my hand, just a 25 pound kettlebell. And I was doing like 15 reps on my right side and then like eight, eight reps or so on my left side, just, you know, getting that right leg strong. You yeah. Know? And then I've been doing some lateral hops over the stick, you know, and just... If you're doing fucking hops, I'm, man. I'm doing lateral hops over the stick. I, uh, what, I've been doing those a couple days this week, but I was doing a combo of doing an isometric strength and then 30 seconds of lateral stick hops. One leg or single leg, just yeah. alternating. And then back to an isometric and then stick hops. I did that on Tuesday. Nice. You know, so, you know, it feels good. Yeah. It's just, it's making sure it's strong. You know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you've been doing the, the isometrics, which, you know, we've talked about gives you like such an advantage over a normal rehab routine that, uh, cause I was like, cause the thing is, is like what attendants, what attendants do, right? Like they give uh, stability to the joint. Like they, they provide structural integrity and stability to the joint and like they get in trouble when there's too much stress put on them, right? That's when they, they snap. And so, uh, you know, you've got your, the, uh, you know, the acute where just like something fucking freak happens and your knee gets blown out. But a lot of times it's more of a accumulation and just, you know, something that shouldn't have made it blow out did. Like that's what happened with, you know, when you just took a step to do a collar drag, like that shouldn't have blown your knee out, right? It's not like you're playing football and somebody blasted your knee from the side and folded it. Right. So the, um, so, but uh, the more stability the system is able to generate, the less it relies on the tendons and ligaments to like help provide that stability. And so what's up, man? I'm here for my Pokemon update. All right. Awesome, dude. Well, we are, we were waiting for it. We were wasting time talking about training while we were waiting for (laughs) For the Pokemon update. Okay, I bring a card. His name is Type Null. I actually lost him. I uh, no, wait, no, not lost him. I gave him to one of my friends to trade for another Pokemon called Seal. His uh, attacks are Smash Kick, which does twenty damage, and Quick Blow, thirty plus damage. And it's a basic. And it's the first stage. It has 100 hit points. And it's a colorless. That's pretty cool, dude. And it has no resistance. Its weakness are fighting types. Hmm. And it's an uncommon. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Nice. Why'd you pick that one? Because um, I actually traded this and it's one of my favorites because I got one back. Ah. It's not the exact same one. But you got one in a pack after you uh-huh. traded your, your oh, get, other one away. Guys, guess what? What? This is actually a legendary Pokemon. That's really? Wh- that's why I wanted it back. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's, that's awesome, good, dude. man. Yep. Anything else? Any other updates in Z's world? See the close school down the last two days. Yeah. So you've had... Yeah, extra yeah. days off. Yeah. Um, I'll have the, I'll have a break until next month. 
Because you don't go to school next week, huh? Nope. Is it Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving break. So you got two extra days because of that virus going around, huh? Yep. How do you feel? You feel strong? You didn't get that dumb old virus, did you? Yeah, I didn't. Nice, man. It's because yep. you're healthy and strong. Mm -hmm. Our kids avoided it. Thankfully. Yeah, yeah. Uncle almost stepped on type no. That yeah. happens. It happens. He's a big dog. All right. Well, thanks for the update, dude. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs> you want to do a new drawing update? <laughs> yeah. That kid cracks me up. So anyways, man, no, yeah, so the, uh, actually, like, one of the studies that I was um, looking at, I've had on my bro science thing for, like, a couple weeks because I haven't talked about it yet, but uh, they were looking at, like, isometric training versus um, regular training, and, like, one of their conclusions was that, like, strength comes from better stability and muscle recruitment. And so, uh, you know, that's just the more strong, you know, the more stability that you have and, and the better that muscle recruitment is, the stronger you are. And that's what the isometrics work on. So yeah, it, it's, um, you're just, yeah, your, your rehab that you did incorporating those, it's like, it's just such a different thing. So I would think that you're probably a little bit ahead of like the normal rehab curve because I mean, like we've talked about, like this isn't, the, those things aren't part of the normal rehab strategy. Like you're, right. you're showing your therapist and, and it's like, huh, this is interesting. Or the things like the, the mace and the Indian clubs and all those things. So it's, uh, you know, your rehab strategy for it this time was, I think, much Different. more effective. And then, I mean, that's just, but none of that's going to make the tendon stronger. The, the, no. the, you know, it's the, that's just my body mapping that into its own system. Take, yeah. Taking a foreign tendon from a dead guy, putting it into my body, and my body has to accept it and put all its own cells and biology on it to make it its own thing. Yeah. Then, you know, that just takes time. And yeah. that, that's what the surgeon, in my eyes, that's what the surgeon's referring to. All the other strength training I'm doing is just trying to prevent further injury. Yeah. You know, providing that stability and strength. Stability, yeah. yeah trying to run too much force, force through it. Force through it, too exactly. Much, or, yeah, too quickly. So. so. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, at this point, that tendon is what it is. So, wait a minute. It's so, I'm trying to think, like, so there's an ACL, right? Mm hmm So, that's a ligament. Yes. Okay. Sorry, tendon, ligament. Okay. Correct. Sorry. Yeah, 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 ACL. Yeah. Anterior yeah. Cruci crucial cruciate. ligament. Yes. Cruci cruciate. Cruciate ligament. Cruciate yes. ligament, yeah. That's, that's why I was, I was confused for a second because I'm like, because tendons are a little different, right? They're they, different, yeah. Yeah, so ligaments are just straight up the stability structure in the muscle. Like tendons are what you run force through because they run, they turn from the fascia into the tendon and then, you know, that's what connects the muscles to each other. So, um, so yeah, no, but that, that ligament and the stability factor, like, uh, no, I, that, that's what I'm saying is like, it, I, I think that you, that does because you, you're taking stress off of the ligament. Like the more stable that leg is just, from a from a strength from a recruitment and tension standpoint, the less work that ligament the has less to do. ligament the work the less work the ligament has to do, and so you know you're yeah I, I agree with that yeah yeah, that's, yeah that's what that was my point so okay. you incorporating the isometrics in is giving your body a degree of stability that you don't get from not using the isometrics okay and I see. so gotcha. Gotcha. you know that's why I think you're ahead ahead of the curve of the normal rehab curve so um, yeah anyways. My point is, I think that you should just fucking go nuts today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Let's just test it all. I don't know if that's the We'll method. start standing up. And what did fucking Angela like call her drag you or something? Yeah. And she caught me <laughs> off guard. And they, she, you know, she was seated and I stood up from where I came over the situation. And she all aggressively reached up and collar drugged me. I was like, holy shit. Holy shit. And that angry baking with Angela was carried over the mat. So. Angry, angry collar dragging with Angela. I was not expecting that. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> so, yeah, but those are those kind of things, like unexpectedly, yep. you know, that, um, yeah, if you don't have, like, good stability and it starts putting that extra stress on the on the knee. So, so that's... Uh, no, that feels pretty good, man, so... Good, yeah, we'll keep... Obviously, keep ramping it back up. Yeah, that's all. That's all I'm doing. Just so, and today I'm gonna ramp it up a little bit more. Yeah. Just and go by feel. Nice. You know, that's, again, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to set any world records or get myself hurt again. So. Nice. What are you working on? What are you drawing? I don't know. 
figured out when I get there. Yeah, it's kind of where I'm at. I like to do the couple things, just like that balance drill and then like that bass and, you know, how do I kill different open guard things and then start working on a few more specific things. But, uh, yeah, that De La X that I've been drilling the last couple of weeks is, is good. I'm glad I started drilling that again because it's one of those things like you don't use it enough to like really like put it in your repertoire unconsciously. And so you kind of have to consciously put it in there until it starts becoming just more uh, habit. Yep. So, but... Uh, yeah, I've been drilling that the past couple of weeks also. Was, yeah, that's a good... Part of me just kind of wants to wrestle. <laughs> I know, me too. I know, but drilling's good. We got to... It's leading from the front too, you know? Yes. Because drilling's definitely good for... Uh, it's definitely good. I, I, you know, we've talked about it. Things change, their importance. Like, dude, when you're early on in your career, you need to be going to fucking class. You'd be going to like, you know, drill class, like rolling is actually like maybe one of the least productive ways for you to spend your time because it's just like, you know, you're, you're getting something out of it, but it's just like a white belt shit show. Mm -hmm. And then like as you progress, you know, those things change and because, you know, ultimately rolling, that's the ultimate lab. Like that's where you're finding out, does this shit work? You know, what are people doing? And uh, but that's where, like, you know, the specific drilling. Man, we haven't done that in a while. I miss. Well, uh, positional sparring, like, that's, yeah. I think that's a tool that we don't use nearly enough. Well, I like what, remember when we were doing it? You were doing it when you were coaching the, the advanced mm -hmm. class where we were doing, like, three-minute rounds. Three-minute rounds. Higher belt starts in, a, in, in the bad position, either, like, bottom side control or with someone on your back or mounted or something. You know, lower belt gets the better position. And then you go, and if you get a submission or you guys have to reset for some reason, you go back to that position, yep. but it's you, you roll from there. So it's the whole, that's enough time for you to work out and work to a better position. If you're, you know, a higher belt and, uh, which, you know, I, I like the, like, as I've been coaching the classes more, I, I, uh, I'm starting to like just straight positional sparring better, but as long as you put it in the right context, right. Because like usually the way that it's like, here's the, we're going to go over a couple of moves from this position and now we're going to use specific sparring, like the, you know, the, the specific, um, yeah, sparring there to give you like a little bit higher live randomized reaction. So, you know, when you're just drilling it, people are going to be a little floppy, right? Because mm -hmm. they don't, and then you go, when you go to the situational sparring, well, that is, uh, or uh, then, you know, the volume knob gets turned up a little bit, but not all the way. Like, that's where it gets, turns into a shit show because it's not supposed to be 80 to 100%. Like, that's, the, the, I mean, jiu-jitsu never should be, but, like, situational sparring especially should be around, like, 60%, you know, because you're just looking to get... Good uh, looks. Good looks, yeah. yeah. What? How are people actually going to react to me trying to do this to them with them trying to resist it? And so, yeah, you're just taking it to that next level and then, you know, live randomized reactions on some level in a controlled setting. And then you take it to the live sparring where, you know, things are more intense and you're, you know, you got to work that in with everything else that's going on. And so, uh, yeah, like within that context, I think that situational sparring's great. But I just remember situational sparring from just being like, you know, kind of random stuff that we would do at the end of class. And, and it's like, you know, you get to, again, two white belts that are just like a fucking death match yeah. going on. You're and, missing the point of it. Yeah, think. missing the point. It's like if you use it in the right context. But uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, man, rolling's where it's just so much fun. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's what it's all about. So Cool. Yeah, let's, man. I say we call it a wrap. Yeah, I say we call it a wrap. Let's go. Uh, I'm gonna go get some food before we go. Before we train, do our training. So cool. We're right on. I guess right. we'll uh, talk to everybody next week. See you. See you. Thank you for listening to the Grumpy Guy BJJ podcast. Thank you all for listening. You can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Please make sure to subscribe and leave us a review. It really does help and will allow us to keep putting out episodes. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, hit us up at grumpyguybjj at gmail.com. 
Also, go to our website, grumpyguybjj.com, and get signed up for podcast updates and get our free BJJ Improvement Starter Kit. That's it for now. So get on the mat, train hard, and talk to you all next week. They shoes, what? no trace of the tools Shaped into face, fuck the rules Snooze, you lose One eye always open, it times two No clue, but soon a brief monsoon Might give you a view to choose Stay tuned, include, won't conclude To the end is near beware There's consequences, but what you do To me, you deem it The devil of many levels I keep on beating For several of them rebels Me, myself, he died Myself, he died